of Literature from Pondicherry, Central University. During the four years she spent in England as a student and a teacher, she gained insights into the challenges encountered by the language learners and the potential remedies that resort them and polished her understanding of multicultural, multilingual and multi-ethnic learning in teaching scenario. She later obtained her doctorate in English language education from the English and Foreign University, Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad, India. Besides, her teaching philosophy is deeply rooted in a belief that education must be an agent of transformation by enabling its stakeholders to activate social and emotional learning, thus building a better humanity. She works in the area of metacognitive awareness and attempts to understand how motivation and willingness to communicate correlate with it. She also explores the possibilities and challenges of EMI in the Indian multilingual context. At present, she researches in the field of aviation English and develops materials for training in the aeronautical communication. She has numerous awards and honors to her credit from India and abroad. She has published many research articles in reputed journals and wrote books, chapters that has been and has been a speaker for various national and international seminars and webinars. We are privileged to welcome you, ma'am. Over to you. I welcome uh, Dr. Kartika to take on and let's start with the presentation. Dr. Kartika, ma'am, over to you. There is some issue. Okay, 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 ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So due to some technical glitches there, uh, so we'll be uh, starting it a bit late. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience caused. Okay. And uh, Just wait for a second, we are coming back. Yeah, see Joy. Thank Good you. Afternoon. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. You are you are audible, ma'am. Perfectly okay. audible. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. I could Welcome, see Paul sir here. Thank you. Thank you. I could see Paul sir here. Good afternoon, Paul sir. Uh, if you're here. Yes, sir is here. Yes, sir is very much here. Thank you so much for uh, coming in, sir. I'll uh, I'll start. So please let me know when my screen is visible and uh, just taking an anticipatory bail in case of any technical difficulties, I'll be joining back. Uh, see, we don't know. It's raining here and sometimes it disturbs the network connectivity. In case of anything, please let me know um, over the phone or uh, through this chat box or whatever. I'll be joining back. Uh, now, let me just share my screen. Okay. Uh, yes. Are you able to see this? Yes, ma'am. It's coming. Okay. Just let me know when it is completely visible. Is it visible? Yes, yes, ma'am. It's visible. All right. Okay. Uh, so good afternoon everyone and thank you Dr. Panda for this opportunity and I'm really glad to address uh, you people on this particular topic, social and emotional learning in English as a second language classroom. Uh, so uh, basically this is, uh, you know, if you have listened to the uh, people who have introduced me, that was a profound in, uh, introduction. Thank you very much uh, 
uh, you both. I, I just could see the name Radha, but I forgot the name of the other gentleman. Thank you very much uh, for that introduction. Uh, so you told about uh, my philosophy of teaching, which is based on a lot of empathy and uh, uh, social and emotional aspects of learning. Uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, this and especially in this context. So what I, I uh, prefer you to do to think along with me, there are quite a, long, uh, quite a lot of practices that are already existing, but it needs a bit of fine tuning. That's it. So we will just have a discussion based on that. I'll, I'll try to just invite your attention into this concept called social and emotional uh, learning. And you may think about how it could be um, how it could be incorporated into the ESL classrooms. We can think about from uh, the teacher's point of view as well as the learner's point of view. So today's session, I'll be just discussing three or four major things. What is social and emotional learning? Core competencies and guiding principles of SEL, uh, that is social and emotional learning. Why SEL in ESL classrooms? Why, why, what is the significance? and then problem and possibilities of SEL integration in ESL classroom. So these are the few things that I would like to discuss with you today. Then it's open for discussion. So now um, you look at this, uh, we always say that heart is the repository of feelings just in layman's terms. And then brain is with what we think. So we say that, you know, certain people just use their brain, whereas I use my heart. So this is the correction if we go with that how we feel influences how we think and on the other way how we think influences how we feel as well so this is connected basically social and emotional learning will come into this framework how thought processes are uh, uh, improvised or influenced by the way we uh, way we feel things and then how it works the other way around i'll be just inviting your attention into this so what is social and emotional learning? Social and emotional learning is a process through which one individual acquires and apply the knowledge, skills, and attitudes for a few purposes. Okay, first one to develop healthy identities, one's own identity, pretty healthy one. Uh, I'm not talking about the physical uh, fitness or anything. I'm talking about the emotional. Uh, So um, then the second thing is, how do you manage your emotions and achieve personal and collective goals? This is one focus of SEL. And feel and show empathy for others. Establish and maintain supportive relationships. Make responsible and caring decisions. These are certain things that we already do in different forms in our classrooms or in our social interactions. But you look at the scenario, you look at the unrest in the world, and many a time as a person, I feel that there are so many ignoble deaths <laughs> happen in classrooms because maybe the teachers don't care, the parents don't care. Maybe it's a fault of all the stakeholders who are involved in this process called learning and teaching. Uh, there are a couple of incidents which if I start talking about it, it will prolong. I can't give you so many anecdotes within whatever span of my teaching uh, experience that I had in England and in India. I have come across uh, severe, uh, severe situations. I would say severe situations, though it's, it's a little different kind of an adjective to go collocate with. But um, where I was actually uh, stuck with the question, you know, what to do in this context. And recently somebody told me that uh, there was a situation when he actually got really puzzled when one student was supposed to write the exam three days after he lost his entire family to COVID. So there are situations like this in our lives. Um, and uh, we, we cannot just uh, divorce ourselves from being that, uh, that full human being, the complete human being who feels and who has to think. So when we when we place it all into the context of learning, uh, my argument is that if we start it from the uh, from the lower level classrooms, that is from uh, the nursery level or pre-KG level onwards, if we can actually 
think through the perspective of social and emotional learning, which in the West is being practiced quite well, uh, if we can think through it, uh, it can actually create a generation of human beings who are empathetic, who can actually care for others, who can make decisions effectively, who can work in teams, and who can formulate healthy identity. All that thing that is uh, being listed here. So basically, this is what I think. Uh, and then this is what uh, proof or evidence is being uh, found about to multiple researchers. UNESCO does a lot of research in social and emotional learning. And uh, they have come up with uh, so many brilliant uh, stories. Stories in the sense, this is not uh, the fictional kind of stories. These are actual case studies from various parts of the world. Uh, they focus a lot in the African continent. So how certain things like sexual abuses, drug use, uh, all these things got reduced among uh, teenagers because of this implementation of social and emotional learning uh, strategies in the classroom. So I'm not talking about a classroom which is vicious. I'm talking about a classroom where uh, teachers and learners do not really uh, understand each other. Perhaps there is no need, definitely there is no need of you knowing a lot about me when I come to deliver a session or when I come to your classroom. You don't have to know where I come from, all those things. Maybe it's immaterial. But there should be some kind of a connection between the teacher and the learner, which actually makes the learner feel comfortable with the teacher. And first, you know, we have to identify that the teacher is actually uh, somebody the learner looks up to for getting knowledge or for getting comfort, whatever it is. So that, uh, you know, that persona of the teacher is very important where the students feel comfortable. I can tell the teacher about it. I won't be judged. So being judgmental is a problem that many teachers uh, uh, have had. I, I have very interesting example, but then uh, time is a constraint. So I'm just limiting everything. Just know that my entire argument is around this idea of teachers and students being mutually empathetic in the teaching and learning process and the classroom being a very organic kind of space where a lot of healthy interactions happen between teacher to students through teacher dialogues and students to students like uh, you know peer interaction and with every other stakeholder you think about it we have parents teachers association in schools and we have uh, you know parents being called to colleges also sometimes and uh, um, you know my tenure at uh, Vellore institute of technology uh, it shows that there are certain uh, systems on which parents can actually uh, step into the learning process of uh, students, uh, you know, they call it different names in your, your institutions. Also, you might have uh, platforms like that where uh, mentoring happens in both ways, you know, teachers mentor the students and in turn that triangle parents, teachers and students triangle. It works well. These are all minor aspects of uh, SEL. But how we implement that into our educational context is a little uh, challenging because of uh, the kind of educational system that we have been uh, following or that we've been like practicing quite like rote learning or I, I don't want to go back to that negative aspect of all those things but what I want to um, tell you is to look forward to something that we can actually incorporate without looking at a big change I'm not talking to uh, I'm not talking about revising the entire educational system I'm talking about what all little, small little things that we teachers can do in our classes. And as learners, we can bring in. So here, uh, I'm not sure how many students are here, but largely I understand that this is a crowd of uh, teachers, whoever is here. Um, so what I want to tell you is to be precise, what all small practices that we can uh, adapt to our classes, which can make it a better place and can, um, can actually uh, get a host of students uh, who are, you know, compatible, who are empathetic, and who can uh, have that kind of healthy identity for themselves, who can uh, retrospect, who can think about uh, things very effectively, who are creative, who are critical thinkers, like that. What are, what are small things that we can do? That will be looked at. So much of time on that slide. Now, core competencies in SEL. 
if we understand this we will think that okay when i show you the uh, terms you will think that yeah i know this everybody knows that but what we don't know is how do we implement what are the strategies to implement these core competencies into our esl classrooms and i'll tell you why esl in scl or scl in esl i'll tell you that in a while so the self awareness is the first competency the capacity to reflect our own feelings values and behaviors simple as simple as that you need to know what kind of a person i was telling you very confidently that i am an empathetic person how do i know that i am aware of that fact and similarly i am aware of what all things uh, can actually provoke me what all things can actually make me ang angry all those things i know about myself so it's it's just controlling your own feelings values and behaviors because you understand that and self awareness is very important if you don't know where you lose your temper it's very difficult to go ahead with a communicative situation especially when there is an aggressive communication scenario it's very difficult uh, i'll just tell you something uh, if somebody uh, who has been into my classes might have heard this story i tell this to my engineering students actually um, it, it's the way you tackle the situations there was one person who was looking for a job and he went for an interview and uh, the interviewer asked him uh, many questions and he didn't know any of the answers so from the beginning itself he said i'm sorry i can't answer this question second question i'm afraid i don't know the answer to this question um, no i'm 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 no i'm sorry i can't answer this question so multiple times he had to he had to say no he didn't know what to do but he said it and a few days later the appointment order reaches him and he wonders what is it about and you know what he was placed in the complaint section of the that company because they want super polite people who can actually handle that kind of an aggressive situation so this is about you know you being aware of your language that is where the esl connection comes you are aware of yourself and you can have the control over your language when you have an aggressive kind of situation you can just shout you can just say all those swearing words but how do you control that bit of yours it's it's important self awareness is an important concept and social awareness it's not just about your own uh, your own identity that or your own being that you have to be aware of but you need to also be aware of the uh, things around you to view situations from somebody else's perspective respecting the social and cultural norms of others and celebrating diversity the celebration of diversity is something that i always uh look for in my class uh, if you think about your own classes you can see a diverse crowd diverse in, in all sense of the word it can be the religious one it can be uh, it can be several things language diversity so many things are, are there so how do we celebrate this kind of diversity i'll tell you a few things that i do in my classes to celebrate diversity a little later so uh, it's not just knowing yourself knowing thyself is very important but then you have to also know about the other person um, other others you know other perspectives multiple perspectives to be uh, exact and relationship skills something that people don't have you look at the newspapers or look at the news pieces that come up every day we can see that there are severe problems in um, you know in youngsters managing it's not just youngsters but then let us take it like that uh, managing relationship it's it's aggression all the time um and then where does it come from uh, i had an argument very recently with somebody who said that you know uh, a person having a very traumatic past cannot just uh, outburst it onto somebody else saying that see i have had a very terrible past and then this is how i can uh, behave the best so, well that is true but think about an educational scenario when people bring baggages especially emotional baggages into the classroom if the teachers cannot identify that uh it can create a lot of problems in that person's learning sometimes in the teaching scenario itself because if you think about your own classrooms you will have a few ex experiences like this uh for example there can be a problem student in your class i won't call child um that that person might be creating a lot of issues in your class i remember one of my colleagues standing in a class and crying because students were throwing paper planes and then uh, she didn't know what to do and i had to go and then console her get her out of the classroom and then investigate why they did that the reason was really interesting which i don't want to share uh, but just know that it was just because the teacher cannot 
establish that kind of connection with the students. The teacher cannot identify in what way the students learn. And there is no course or there is no single um, uh, training course that will tell you how to go about it because everybody is, is very different. You know, all of us are connected, but then everybody is very different. So it's like the teacher has to have the capacity to uh, talk and to identify things. For me, talking, I feel uh, to be a very, or dialogue as uh, you can call, to be very effective and uh, important in a classroom. Not just that the teacher has to speak, speak, speak all the time. It's not like that. But there should be a kind of healthy dialogue. Uh, and there comes the concept of transportable identity. This was uh, first uh, mentioned by Zimmerman. And later, recently uh, in Warwick, there is a lot of study happening in uh, transportable identity. Uh, so this is about how the students actually carry something that they already have into the classroom. And if we trigger that off, then better learning uh, happens. Something that we know, but a little like theorized than all. So relationship skills, when you uh, come to that positive connections between peers, I have, I have heard so many comments like, I don't like that. I don't like that boy. I don't like that girl. I don't like the attitude. Why don't you like that? They don't ask that question to themselves. They have to ask that. Then comes the self-awareness. Why don't I like that person? Is it like out of nothing I, I hate that person no so relationship skills are also very important don't think about anything else i'm talking about a very healthy balanced classroom where interaction is the focus and self-management quite related one the set of skills that includes motivation goal setting personal organization self-discipline controlling yourself using strategies to cope with stress last week you had a session on stress management so i think um, you have benefited out of it and you know how is uh, self-management being done. I'm not spending a lot of time on that. Responsible decision making. Very difficult. People cannot even cross a road because they can't make the decision. Okay, they look left, right, left, right. And then they, they just close the eyes and uh, cross. I remember how I used to cross the roads in Himayat Nagar. So, um, or uh, Tarnaka for that matter at that point of time back in 2015 or 14 and all. It's very difficult to make the decision because the people who drive themselves do not know where, they, which direction they are going to go. So responsible decision making in a class is very important. That is the ability to make your choices, uh, considering the well-being of myself and the other person. It's not always on me. Okay, uh, When there is a collective decision that is being made in the classroom, take it for example, uh, the submission of an assignment and the deadline that is given. Do you discuss that with students? I am sure you people will do, do discuss it with the students. But when when you give the date, is it like a Hitleric statement that you give? On 15th of uh, September, you have to submit this assi assignment. And do you actually invite suggestions from the students? If yes, good. And when you do that, are you also looking at the students checking with each other? I'm sure that there will be different differences of opinions. And then some students will say that no 17th or 20th or maybe uh, sometimes you know in my class a little earlier also because they have something else to do on that particular day there are things like that so how are they making that kind of small little choices in classroom these are all important factors and when they have such practices inside the classroom outside the classroom they can actually function better it's all very simple but then having a bit of knowledge about all these core competencies will give you directions in actually creating certain situations in your class where SCN is actually embedded or implemented, which is not happening in many cases. We do it because it's part of our, our character. There are certain teachers, I remember uh, in one of the schools in Telangana when I went for a class, um, uh, it, it was about classroom management. One teacher told me, this was long back, okay, 2017 probably. Uh, he said, um, the students keep on asking about going to the washroom, you know, children, school children. They keep on asking permission for going to the washroom and I don't allow them. And sometimes they ask, can I drink water? Can I drink water? I don't allow that. So when he says that he knows the better picture of his class, there is no doubt. But there is not even a benefit of doubt. It's a strict no. We never know the other side of the story, right? So that is what I said. When we know all these core competencies or guiding principles or what are the strategies in which we can actually implement SEL in our classrooms, that will actually equip us to create certain situations in our classroom 
which can uh, which can really uh, greatly benefit all the stakeholders well at least the learners i'll move on now the principles the first one is to create okay so what uh, what are the creation strategies that we have consciously create a nurturing caring and safe environment for students uh, that is uh, something uh, do, do you do you really think your class is so much conducive of learning do you think there is a place where they can actually debate argue without being hurt i had situations in my class where i had to really control them uh, especially when we discuss matters like um, say for example um, reservation then there, there, there is so much to say there is so much of anger there is so much of vehement criticism that is happening and there are people who are sitting quiet who are hurt so how do we manage that how do we provide that kind of a uh, balanced kind of environment which is safe safe in the sense not just like taking a gun and shooting it down you know that in uh, several countries it's happening um, that is why they all start turning their uh, you know brains into this fpl uh, pedagogy so now look at this how do you create think think about it is my class conducive of learning just i have a few more points uh, about it i'll tell you that in detail now integrate integrate scl wherever possible whenever possible uh, into the academic instruction so this is a larger kind of idea where you have to put it into even into content teaching i'm not only talking about the esl context even in the content teaching i remember uh, long back pretty long back i had a colleague who used to criticize the students for their wearing branded clothes um, he used to criticize them for wearing branded watches branded shirts and he used to say that you are just wasting the parents money this that and all i never had an idea i used to audit classes so this was a thermodynamics class that i used to audit and then i was really surprised why this person was making that comment okay and then after that Understood what kind of context is very important. So there are so many things where self-aware is important. Am I actually conversing with the students? Maybe assistant, maybe maybe just like the sharp criticism or sarcasm. I use a lot of sarcasm in my classroom, but I'm very cautious when it hurts others, so that you I can give it back. But I know it's really challenging, and you use that you never know who is being hurt because you can see all those bubbles and the um, you know cubicles on the screen. So because you will get cues from the faces of the students that it is easy. Now, when you integrate, how far? Successful in building all these things into the in, uh, into the learning uh, or teaching uh, teaching structure, and now communicate early. Better, you know, we say better late than never. That is why I said if we start it from, it's it's really beneficial. But at least at the tertiary level, if you can actually give that care, I tell people that it's just like the ragging uh, psychology or the or, or even you know uh, what is that or the uh, skills or the sovereignty. Uh, something like that you know the old psychology of mother in law problem i was a daughter in law and speaking with this way and the mother in law let me speak and talk to this way simple as simple as that so this syndrome will go all down the road and can't be put a full stop at some point in time and you know why is that happening it's not that i'm saying uh, this moves uh, and it's all Before the 
particular examination or we are tied up. So how can we actually uh, actually provide this kind of guidance in SEL? These are the questions that we need to think about. And then finally, empowering students to take charge of their own social and emotional learning. Uh, you know, how do we empower them to uh, be autonomous in uh, you know, be autonomous in taking care of learning, not just the content uh, and other things, but also the social and emotional uh, aspects. Now, the create strategy. Collaborative develop classroom rules and expectations with students. Uh, Dr. Panda, am I audible? Can somebody please respond? Hello? Yes, ma'am. You yes, are audible. You are absolutely audible. Yes. You are audible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are part new. Yeah, this is just a wonder process because I can see you on the screen and then I thought that I'm talking. Uh, no. Thank you very much. So, create strategy, collaboratively develop classroom rules and expectations. This is a practical industry level. Uh, if I don't practice it, I won't tell you this. Uh, it's easy to set rules on, you know, I'm not talking about, uh, okay, you have to come, you have to do this first, you have to do this second. I'm not talking about that kind of making. Even if it's about the submission guidelines and all, I give a lot of freedom to my students and I say that, but when it comes to assessments, I'm going to be very strict. Okay. And you cannot just expect marks being given just like that. I'll give you all parameters for every single assessment. If it is assessment, I give you all the descriptors that I can score you. So everything will be given in advance. And after you go through it, then I'll conduct the uh, test. And if you want a retest, I can conduct that also. But the evaluation will be very strict. I tell this to my students, very clear, crystal clear. And then they cannot complain about it. So the rules are actually set in the beginning. Uh, and with the kind of syllabus that I, I dealt with all through my career, I had some kind of freedom in choosing the assessments that I want to conduct. I'm not sure whether all of you have that uh, faculty or all of you have that kind of freedom. But if you have it, please, please use it. Ask the students what kind of assessments they want to submit. I've done something interesting like citizenship journalism. It was really nice. Citizen journalism, not, not citizenship. So it was really nice. They went around and they clicked pictures and they shot videos and they come up and they presented it. And only when I hear English, I can give them marks. So it's not about their uh, or animation or effects that actually fetch them marks. <laughs> they used to have discussions and shoot it and bring you classes. I used to uh, project it and we used to have very good kind of discussion. So you can ask the students what kind of, you can give a range topics and ask them to choose them and also um, give them a set of assessments that you have in your mind magazine making citizen journalism making a website or a digital profile whatever it is use it with the technological bit hereafter the world is looking forward to uh, having something like a, a hybrid kind of atmosphere so we have to actually uh, think about it more and more into our classrooms with whatever limited resources that we have. If we start complaining about it, we'll always talk about digital divide and being haves and have not and all those things. But whatever we can do from our own uh, end, we have to at least start doing it. Now, encourage students to hold each other accountable for meeting behavior and social interaction. So it's, it's not blaming, it's not a blame game that we are looking uh, forward to. They have to be uh, they have to be very clear about their accountability in certain matters, especially in teamwork. When they do teamwork, they have to know that I have to do this way. So you as a teacher need to um, need to formulate some kind of a gui guideline or a criteria where even when there is a group work, there is some kind of individual feedback. Provide multiple ways for students to report, discuss and work through conflict. What I do is I give them situation. For example, one person has to act like an auto driver who wants 50 rupees extra and the other one is passenger and how they negotiate. Or somebody as a bookseller um, and the other person as a student who is actually commenting about he or she not having enough money to buy that book and they have to negotiate. So this kind of fair work, if you really think through it and give them some kind of uh, 
people got to use, they can actually uh, do a great job. It can actually function as a proper, um, you know, language, speaking, uh, uh, speaking kind of practice or speaking material it can work as or uh, the kind of task it can be. Uh, at the same time, it can also tell them indirectly because they are thinking about it all the time, right? Instead of using give me that, they can actually use can I have that. So there will be magical kind of changes in their uh, in their vocabulary, in their communication, uh, in their body language itself. Again, I wouldn't say this if I hadn't practiced it. Uh, reward positive behaviors. I'm not asking you to bring some gifts and give it to them. Just a pat on the shoulder if it was a physical scenario, or saying that well. And what I do now, I use MSPs, and whenever somebody does something extremely well, we clap. So there is a clap option, so we give. It's very difficult for people to appreciate someone. Someone uh, gives a good talk, someone sings well, someone dances well, someone does something. It's very difficult for people to appreciate, you know, whether it's between colleagues, whether it's between peers, whether it's between student and teacher. Very difficult. I don't know what is the problem, but people even are reluctant to smile these days. So you just reward the, the uh, you know, uh, kind of hearty smile. Uh, a good word enough okay i'm not asking you to give the pen just like how uh, that uh, three idiots professor gave the pen to his dearest student not like that i'm not asking you to give anything material i'm asking you to give something in words because they'll cherish it they they do they will now the second strategy the, uh, the second principle is to integrate so what i do in my class is choosing a text with uh, SEL related topics. And one of my favorite examples is how I did, uh, uh, you know, teaching of infographics. We had to teach infographics and in the examination questions will come from infographics. And when we prepare the questions, a uh, lot of the questions are not factual, but it's inferential or it's more like a general kind of questions. They have to really think about it. And uh, in, in the Bloom's taxonomy, it goes to the creative level. They have to read it, understand, and then uh, think about it and write. This is how the question pattern is. So when we when we actually teach creative infographics, we have a different methodology. But when we, create, when we actually teach how to interpret infographics, uh, I used certain, uh, certain materials which are actually having a lot of things to discuss. Uh, in terms of SEL. For example, you might know about the Tam Luang Cave incident where uh, those uh, children, the soccer team got stuck in a cave and then there was a rescue mission. The entire world was looking at uh, Thailand. So that particular incident and I showed them the infographic and then they had to uh, interpret it. I asked them to create questions based on that. And I asked them to create inferential questions based on that. And they came up with brilliant questions, which actually made them think. You know, how did all those 11 member or 12 member team stay inside without leaving, without even, uh, you know, proper food, uh, oxygen, uh, light, nothing was there. How did they manage all those days? So they have so many stories to talk about and it shows about internal uh, strength and then how they uh, you know how being sports persons help them and how the coach help them so many aspects to it so being trainers or being teachers we have to actually appropriately choose a topic another favorite one was the miracle of hudson um, uh, one uh, you remember that uh, us flight that landed in hudson so i take that to my class um, and then have a discussion based on that. And then play that last bit of uh, the movie Sunday to them, uh, which is based on the same incident. And then they start thinking. I'm not thinking just one fringe material or just showing something on the screen, but I'm also incorporating a lot of other things into it. I'm using a lot of I because I just want to tell you that it's possible. You shouldn't think that this is not possible. So I practiced it. That's why I'm saying that, uh, you know, it is possible. So choose a text which has something to deal with it. And we have lots of texts. You remember Karnataka textbook which had a police officer as the mother. Uh, usually it's just like the father sitting on the chair and reading the newspaper and mom with a spatula running around. This is the picture that we used to get. I used to get that in the school case. And then that was a very positive kind of change. So we have to pick things from uh, things like that and then use it in the classroom. 
where there is a lot of uh, um, you know a lot of things to discuss uh, on then also the program based project based on students talking to teacher that there comes in the identity only through teacher dialogue you understand what is the person interested in i used to conduct you know spot interviews or focus groups with the students just to uh, ask them about what are your strengths what are your uh, uh, you know likes and dislikes all those things uh, then design a full classroom unit based on real life theme this is also something that we can actually uh, do just give a theme to them based on a, a real life situation environmental crisis something like that and then you can you can just make all the activities around it the be it speaking listening be it whatever you can just make all the activities around it and then can have multiple layers of discussion on that point of view you know you need to just uh, point out how academic skills can also promote positive constructive social interaction so even if you are writing something you can use that for speaking and when you are actually focusing on the development of speaking skills you, you can also um, you know get them think about things critical thinking can be uh, enhanced so multiple uh, perspectives we have to look at and then build creative writing uh, or activities that allow students to express in uh, i to become a writing they they divide into different teams in some way say for example happiness something like that and together they have to uh, you know frame a poem maybe eight lines or six lines something like that and uh, sometimes it will be just about a day you know write about the day that is your favorite day and then they come up with different days some somebody will talk about monday somebody will talk about sunday someone will talk about friday uh, and then the reasons will be coming that so it's collaborative kind of thinking that is a collaborative writing that happens here it can actually create a lot of enthusiasm among the students and lot of connectivity being established between them and between the teacher and the student and sometimes it expresses emotions in such a uh, poignant way i tell you one recent example i gave a task uh, for for the gift that they cherish not talk about write about it and then uh, no no write about it. Uh, take a picture of a gift that they cherish and write how and why uh, they like that and then one person said uh, no if you had asked me this question six months before i would not have been able to uh, say it. but now i cherish this and this is going to be the everlasting one because this is for my father who my lost 3 months ago to go so you see the kind of emotional things uh, and uh, i don't want to uh, uh, show that script to you but it's intense emotion uh, emotional expression that i feel and it's so regarding to me as a teacher i feel but it's so clearly going to
think about their own strategies for problem solving tool selection organizational strategies and other thought process they have to be if it doesn't happen in the classroom where else would it happen at home i doubt now to communicate something very simple and we do that early and often as i told you and every educator should be aware of the scl objectives we have to be we know it but only thing is that as i said we have to fine tune it we need to have somebody to maybe i don't know i'm i'm just telling you this thing some of you might get it like yes i i am doing it and i can do it better some of you may think that okay this is already something that is being done but if i were you i would have taken the input and i would have modified it every single time that i do now what i do in this semester is totally different from what i did in the previous semester because i take continuous feedback from the learners not that i get it in writing but i ask people i continuously engage in discussion with students even though it's an online thing i go through the recordings of the sessions uh, sometimes and transparency should be there in communication in fact you say something specific to that you say that okay, this is not permissible in my class it is not permissible in your class it's not that you are always being empathetic and thinking on their point of view and they can do anything that they want there are people who take advantages of that once you make your point clear and once you actually establish now instructions difficult i understand instruction is difficult uh, instruction in the sense you are good teachers no doubt in that but instructing scl embedding it into our curriculum is really difficult based on the individual and group needs of the students we have to be sure to include multiple methods and modalities we use that only thing is that bring in an scl perspective there just like i told you about the infographic bit that i i use that is the most telling example that's why i use that one Uh, uh, you know, when it is Women's Day, I use a lot of uh, advertisements. For example, this Vartika advertisement, Vartika hair oil, where there is a woman who had, uh, who is a survivor of cancer, who has got her head shaved. I am sure some of you must have. And then I just propose it with a text, which is about the advertisement strategies. And then, then I give them something about uh, to, something to think about the gender, uh, the beauty concept. um the illness all those things and then how socially the illness is perceived so many things are there in that advertisement along with that i give them something about the politics of the advertisement in the topical pattern you watch something or you listen to something then you read something you synthesize it and then you talk about it then i either ask them to talk and after talking they can write or maybe i ask them to write and then talk so integrating several skills and with an scl perspective very important and it can work really miraculously you trust me on that uh, and then short personalized illustrative uh, text which are for social stories i am talking about the social story i am talking about the uh, about the case studies you will have numerous examples straight from your own uh, life or something that you have heard you don't have say the george bernard has said said this all that and you can talk about somebody else you know i i talk about all my you know talk about things that all my teachers have said Uh, and i sometimes quote them sometimes don't quote them i say that somebody had told me this and it's okay you it's not always shakespeare and uh, george bernard so say things others also say things right so make all those small little stories in your classroom stories are very powerful think about our heritage we have the panchatantra right and how, wh why was panchatantra written who wrote panchatantra i'm sure some of you at least know vishnu sharma why did he write that because there was a there was a king who Thought, uh, I mean, who, whose idiotic children could not be taught because they, they are idiots. So how do they be taught? He invested this particular teacher, Vishnu Sharma, to uh, these. I mean, the children to Vishnu Sharma. And how did he do? He can't go with the normal pedagogy, right? So he modified his pedagogy. How did he modify pedagogy? Just like our uh, share as us, he started telling stories. so through stories there were so many things that is being uh, you know going into the head of the children and eventually they became brighter and you read it you read panchatantra you will see that kind of a transformational perspective in that okay and cherasar could change the uh, sultan to somebody who is from a beast to a human right so stories are very powerful bring them into the class be bold enough to tell them the stories it's okay engineer but they don't love the story but Uh, you know some other uh, uh, mba students they uh, like stories look at shivakera's book it's full of stories.
stories you know through stories he uh, he uh, to talk about uh, the management theories so stories are very powerful believe in that and bring in such short personalized narratives into the classroom explicitly teach protocols and procedures for handling challenging social situations uh, there can be a teachable moment in everything i i tell you a quick example uh, there was so much of stigma about one particular country in my class okay uh, i'm not talking about the uh, the western thing that i have because if i talk about it it's going to be very political let us talk about the indian class and about one particular country serious stigma serious stigma then what i did was i created a video uh, which was uh, which was created by an indian journalist who went to this particular country and to their last room to their history class and asked the female students there to actually uh, tell the history of that particular country So, uh, the Pakistani girls read out the history, and by the okay, see what how over the course of the history is made. Let's see, and then I play the video, and after that, they uh, you know it's time to discuss. They were saying, they were saying so many things. I had called them. Important. 
provide opportunities to safely fail. Very important. I make sure that my classes are like that. You know, even if they fail, nobody is going to look down upon them, or uh, I'm not going to be judgmental upon them. You make it very clear to them that it's okay to fail, but it's only the first step, right? You have to just, uh, uh, you know, surge up. You have to just come up as a phoenix and then fly high. That's it. Offer students scheduled time to interact with students from other classes or grades. See, this is like uh, uh, not always practical, but um, you know, these clubs and all, student clubs and all, th their functioning, all of these things are there in our educational system, but we do not know why they are existing. That is the problem I see. So we have to create situations where I used to bring my students from one class to the other class and then uh, have interactions. Um, uh, you know, pre-pandemic time. Even though I do that, I, I noticed that somebody does exceptionally well in one particular area in my class. When that person is free, I ask that person to step into my other class and uh, deliver the same thing here. So that, you know, a lot, especially I do that with this um, cyber security things. When we started this online teaching, there were a lot of problems. So I told them, prepare something about cyber security. And then not in the computer science terms, but generally, generally. And then I asked that student to come and deliver it into my other sessions as well. So some kind of uh, cross section kind of interaction is really uh, interesting for them. Ask students about what they need, establish multiple venues. So it's not just in class. Why SPL in ESL class? It explains because uh, in, uh, if you think about the ESP context or any other subject for that matter, the students may not get a lot of opportunities to be creative, but in ESL classrooms they can. And conducive environment for analyzing and evaluating things, teachers can bring in topics of learners' interest, a space for transportable identities, as I told you, authentic materials on various subjects and topics can be fine-tuned and used in the classroom. There was a point where my students actually brought in materials and we worked on it together and made it into a language uh, learning material inside class. The entire class worked on it. Uh, now, communication being the focus, it's a, it's a very important aspect of SEL to communicate. Uh, therefore, it can actually uh, be a very fruitful and uh, uh, fertile space for um, nurturing the SEL practices. And now problems innumerable ones, but I'll, I'll just uh, talk about lack of time, syllabus restrictions, teachers being not aware of the SEL perspective. Uh, we know that, but yet we don't know that. Uh, SEL practices not incorporating ESL focus. So uh, when I started doing it, my entire focus went on SEL. And then later I realized that where is my English language teaching going? So I had to consciously bring it in. So this balancing is very important. And I do perceive that as the major problem com uh, compared to everything else. Because even if syllabus is restricting, we can have some choices in terms of materials. If there is no strict textbook from which you are going to conduct examinations. Uh, then possibilities raising teachers' awareness of SEL strategies, uh, something that we do right now. Authentic materials being fine-tuned. Learner-centered kind of teaching. When you are focusing on learner-centered teaching, you are bringing in a lot of SEL components. And this is one thing that I wanted to talk about the present context of trauma-informed assessment practices. We have to be really sensitive towards the needs of the students. We have to make uh, adjustments to our assessment practices. But I know that uh, it depends on the institution and its demands. So this is one uh, possibility of fine-tuning the assessments or changing the assessment practices a little bit um, according to, we all did that. For the past one year, we all did that. But uh, just, I thought that I'll, I'll just put that in. Now, uh, the philosophy, I usually begin with it, but today I'm ending with it. Just read it. Uh, this is from Hayne Ginot, an Israeli educational psychologist who was a Holocaust survivor. And he says, I'm a survivor of a concentration camp. My eyes saw what no person should witness. Gas chambers built by learned engineers. Children poisoned by educated physicians. Infested by trained nurses. Then and then by high school and college graduates. So I'm suspicious of education. My request is this. Help children become true. Your
Thank you. I'm the Okay, do it. All the best. Thank you. So and, and I'm the president of the Sagi. Question, madam. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you so much for uh, a wonderful, uh, uh, elaborated uh, discussion. And uh, may I now request uh, Prabhulika to uh, propose the vote of things. And in between, uh, I may ask uh, anyone if you have any questions, you can pose it. Uh, the floor is open for. The floor is open for discussion. If anybody is there, would like to talk, can ask questions. Can. Yes, uh, one minute. Uh, that's a brainstorming button. Everybody is thanking you, ma'am. Okay, Prabhupada, over to you. Please, uh, please go on. All's well that ends well. I, Prabhupada, on behalf of Dr. Panda Sir, Department of English, convener of the webinar series, profoundly thank Dr. V. K. Karthika Garu the speaker of the day, for her brilliant, informative, and lucid presentation. I am indebted for your cooperation and intellectual deliberation and will look forward to have such great talks in the upcoming semesters. I thank our principal, sir, Dr. L. Koteshwar Rao, for his benevolence, Dr. Srikanth, Dean Skills, FED coordinator, Dr. Vinutna, other functionaries of the university, mostly the staff who supported me in making everything smooth. Thank you so much to all the intellectuals, the learned participants, for passionate and active participation and hope many will join in the course of lecture series. Thanks all. Uh, I request all of you to be there online. Please switch on your video. We'll go for a uh, uh, session. Okay. The one photograph that would be. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Prabhulika. Yeah. All of you, all of you, please switch on your video. Yeah. Radha. Yeah. Please uh, take a picture, Roshan. Roshan, shall we take a picture? Uh, yes, I am doing that. Just Gila, madam, Dr. Nagalakshmi, madam, and other people, please uh, switch on your video. Yeah. Roshan, did you take the video? Or did they take uh, the picture? Uh, sir, most of them, the cameras are not turned on yet. Uh, I can see very few here. Okay. Okay, switch it on and do it. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for all those lovely comments that are popping up in the chat box. I do thank you all. And thank you, Dr. Panda, for giving me this opportunity for inviting me over. Uh, I know a few people who are here, I think. Uh, so hi to all of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And looking forward for the next program of FDP. Uh, that uh, AICT at the three because last time we missed you, but this time we do not want to miss you <laughs> on the same uh, emotional intelligence. And uh, thank you, thank you so much, all of you. Roshan, you have taken the uh, picture, I hope. Uh, yes, sir, I have taken the picture. Okay, thank you and namaste. Namaste, namaste and thank you, all of you. May I leave now? Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, uh, uh, Roshan and Radha, and all my smart team, and my friends are here all around. You know, thank you all. Okay, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.